Best scene, space truckers. Cut to exterior space, future. An alien spaceship drifts idly in space. Its bay doors are open. Mike's shuttle approaches and docks inside. The bay doors close. Cut to interior scrat, alien, ship, corridor. Mike walks toward the control room, wearing a long coat and boots. His heels strike the floor with a metallic echo. A row of flashing red lights follows along the wall as sensors track him. Ten scrat, alien, soldiers stand guard at the end of the corridor. They watch him warily with pulse rifles targeting him. The creatures walk erect with pointed ears, fangs, and bulbous eyes. They wear leather uniforms. Mike casts a disinterested glance at them as he counts to himself how many are there. He removes a tiny disc from his pocket and enters the control room. Scrat alien control room continuous. The main control console is shaped like a semicircle with four Scrat soldiers standing in front of it. Behind the console on an elevated platform is the Scrat leader, General Asher, perched on a simple throne with red plumage on his head. He has a demonic look about him. Through an electronic box on his neck, he will speak to Mike. Mike pauses in the middle of the control console area. Other Scrat soldiers aim their weapons at him. He notices that one Scrat attentively stands guard at the console. Mike raises his hand and displays the disc. His other hand remains close by his side. The general stands and looks down menacingly at him. The silence is intimidating. Finally, Mike speaks. This disc has the terms of the treaty Gemini proposes to you on behalf of Cisco Galactic. A treaty, huh? A Scrat officer, Karnak, takes the disc from him. Mike stares down Karnak. Karnak isn't intimidated by Mike and stares back at him in a tense moment. They don't like each other. I don't trust you. Feelings mutual, lizard face. We've met before. Yeah, at your mother's. Karnak snarls at him. Mike grins. General Asher pounds the console with his fist. Enough! Karnak snarls again at Mike. Mike snarls back at him. Karnak hands the disc to the general. The other soldiers wait for instructions from the general. On top of the console is a sophisticated module with flashing lights. The console monitor displays the location of all the space stations in the sector. Mike notices and realizes it's very important. He subtly slips his hands under his coat. General Asher stands with muscular arms folded. You fools think we're here to negotiate a treaty. <laughs> we're here to enslave you. Mike Snickers plays it off as a joke. Three video screens on the wall are activated. Each screen shows a man being dissected while alive. The eyes look pleadingly at the camera. Mike is appalled, but maintains a calm demeanor. Karnak points to the monitors. Those are the last three vermin to come with the proposal. But aren't you guys here to trade fish, women's laundry, or something of that order? General Asher isn't amused by Mike's humor. He walks down to the control console and pats the module with his clawed hand. You will transport our ships across the galaxy in no time with this little device, and your people are helpless to stop us. Karnak approaches the general and whispers in scrap dialect into his ear. Both stare at Mike. The general nods to Karnak. Seems we have an old debt to settle, Kobe. Karnak grins, bearing pointed teeth. Mike looks disappointedly at Karnak. General Asher gestures for his guards to seize Mike. Mike expects this and slides his coat back with both hands. Attached to his belt are six grenades, four silver, smoke flash, and two black, explosive. Then let's party, boys! Mike tugs two of the silver grenades off his belt. He lobs one across the floor toward the Scrat soldiers and another toward the control console. The flashes stun the Scrat soldiers. Smoke fills the console area and the corridor. Mike again reaches under his coat and pulls out the last two silver grenades. He hurls them into the corridor. Two flashes and smoke fill the exit from the control room. The general shouts in a garbled language at his soldiers. They frantically search for Mike in the smoke. Mike rushes to the console and decks the sentry with a punch to the face. He hurts his hand. Damn it! He removes the module from the console and makes his way through the smoke toward the corridor. Pings from random pulse fire are heard as the soldiers fire blindly from the corridor. Mike pulls one black grenade from his belt and rolls it into the corridor. He flattens himself against the wall. Corridor continuous. The ensuing blast silences the gunfire. 
Soldiers lay across the floor, dead or mortally wounded. Mike rushes down the corridor. He pulls out the last black grenade and lobs it behind him. A pulse from ahead strikes his leg and injures him. He hobbles into the transportation bay. Random pulse fire pings again. Another blast silences them. A klaxon warbles, sounding a warning throughout the ship. Cut to interior shuttle. Mike lunges through the hatch into his shuttle. The hatch closes. He stows the module underneath the seat and operates the controls. Frantically, he toggles the transmitter on. Gemini, we have a situation. I need backup. There's no response. 